Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Saturday morning where, as part of our What's Up in the Neighborhood series, we are actually interviewing the bloggers and photographers that appear on my personal blog role. Now, my good friend Roger has led a tremendously varied life. He worked at a very popular comic book store back in the late, back in the late 70s, early 80s, a place called Fanico, where I bought many a comic book back in the day. He spent many years working at the Albany Public Library. And although I have gone almost 12 years without missing a single day, I believe Roger still has a few years on me in terms of consecutive days of blogging. Um, his blog is has been known by several different names, but you can find it on the site on the blog roll, uh, rogerogreen.com. And Roger, it is such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing on this fine day? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. It, it's uh, it's going to be a new. It's going to be different in 2021. And I can feel it. <laughs> Definitely. Now, one of the things I did want to bring up is you have an extremely varied life. You've, you've been involved in so many different things. And a lot of that is put together in your blog. You've been able to talk about the days that you worked at Fanico, um, your time with the library and the Albany Public Library your time where you won like $20 million on Jeopardy. It wasn't anywhere near that much. You won more? No, I won 17,600, but who's counting? That's up. But see, that's the thing. It's all these great stories that you have, and you've been able to share them on your blog. Not only the great stories, but also the personal stories with your family. And you've also found ways to keep different things subjects going in your blog like a certain day that you'll have designated for a certain type of topic right how did you get into such a routine when it comes to blogging trial and error I, what i what i did for about three years this is back when i had it on um a blog spot blog a blogger blog i had to write every single day and you couldn't save them in the same way you can now so I couldn't post ahead. So I would write. Okay. And, and sometimes it was hard because I was, I was away and I had to do it like at lunchtime or whatever during the middle of a conference. I did that the very first month I had a blog. Made myself totally crazy. I don't know how I pulled that off. So now I find that it's, it's easier to, I almost map out a whole year, but I don't mean, like write everything for a whole year, but I'll say, okay. This year, I'm going to write about the, the major holidays, you know, so I, I don't know what I'm going to write, but I, the fact that I know what I'm going to write makes the writing a whole lot easier because the brain starts doing stuff while you're not even thinking about it, and it makes the process a whole lot simpler. Like, for instance, I wrote a blog recently that I'm not posting until November because it answered a the question I wanted to address that doesn't happen until November. And by the time November comes around, I'll for, have forgotten. What, did I, what was I going to write again? And I said, oh, I got to write this now while I'm still thinking about it. So I don't write, unlike you, I think, I tend not to write in order. I tend to write as the spirit of the topic moves me. So that would explain why sometimes you'll have a blog post about so-and-so just turned 70. And right. it'll be time for that day. Right. I, I've written, I, in fact, I go, I'll go through the calendar and, on, online and find a calendar that says, who's turning 70 in 2021, 2022, whatever year we're in. And I said, oh, okay. And then I look at the, the list and say, I, so I put them all on my blog and then I get to the, around their, the date of their, their um, birth. And, oh, and it could also, by the way, be people who have died, who would have turned 70, but they may have died beforehand. And I say, do I have anything to say about them? And if I do, I write about them. And if I don't, like Jane Seymour turned 70 on 
February 14th of 2021. And I know who she is, but I didn't have anything to say about her. So I didn't write about her, except I put her picture there because, you know, why not? It's on Valentine's Day. But I didn't have anything to say. So it, it, the funny thing about blogging is that I never know what I'm, where it's going to go. I, don't, I come up with an idea, what I want to write, but I actually don't know how it's going to end until I've written it. The, the process of writing and researching it sometimes directs the blog to where it ends up going, which is not what I intended. I know that one of the things when it comes to blogging is if you be if you're on a blog long enough, you'll get people that'll come visit or you'll go searching around for topics and you'll visit a blog and you'll like what they've written and you'll mm -hmm. link up to them. You'll put them on the blog roll. Right. What are some of the things that catch your attention when you're maybe saying, I want to add a couple more pieces to the blog roll? Well, part of it has to do with consistency. Somebody who, who writes once every eight months, I probably won't add to the blog roll. <laughs> uh, somebody, and like, like you, you hardly ever write anything. So it's, you know. Oh, no, man. I go whole entire hours without even touching a keyboard. I mean, I, I'm, sh I'm quite shocked by that. No, it's, it's, some of it is that it, it addresses something in me. There's something, a real, you know, the blog, part of the blog, and you've, you've, I think you've talked about this on your blog, is that there's a relational thing. You have, you have some of them you've written back, written back and forth, and you discover who they are. And you say, I like this person. I've never met them. They live in New Zealand, or they live in France, or they live in Buffalo. And I've never met them, but I feel because I've read what they have written that I know who they are and that they're an interesting and decent person and they're not a schmuck. <laughs> so I don't, I don't feel the need to link to schmucks generally because like, why would I do that? Why would I subject the people who are reading my blog to point them to somebody who's, who's a, a real pain in the tuchus? I wouldn't do that to them. Now, for your years of um, working at Fantaco and being involved in the comic book world, right? let's throw a question at you here. Would you say that the evolution of comics and graphic novels from the time you were at Fantaco until now, mm -hmm. what has been some of the greatest improvements in graphic novels and comics, and what have been some of the most frustrating portions of comics and graphic novels. Well, the great thing about comics is that they've gotten out of that kid ghetto. You know, kids are only kids write, read that stuff. And that's because of some of the, you know, the big names stream um, graphic novels. Mouse is always cited in, or The Spirit by Will Eisner, or even Dark Knight by Frank Miller. Because they, people realize this isn't just kids stuff. This is a legitimate stuff, a legitimate art form. And so that's been really good. What's been frustrating, I suppose, is that there's so much product. It's that it's very hard to keep track of. I've, if I were running a store now, I'm not sure how I would even know how to order the product because it's just so much of it. This is not a bad thing, except it's sort of like the way I look at TV, like, oh, you know what you should watch? You should watch this. Wait a minute. I can't watch this. I haven't watched. Well, have, I have eight episodes of that taped. <laughs> so some of it is, is, is the fact that it's just an awful lot of it. It is. I mean, I, growing up, I mean, I had my DCs and I had the Marvels that I would pull. And then later on, when you get into more of the more detailed stuff like the Watchmen um, Dark Knight, uh, some of the more in-depth things, and then God forbid you ever get a, your hands on a copy of Shonen Jump, you know, that, that's like, that's like anime crack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, I, I, I still, I mean, I was a real fan of, of comic books. I started read, I started reading comic books when I was in college. I didn't read them when I was a kid. I mean, I probably read, I mean, I saw Archie's and Little Lulu's. But then I went down, I went out of that and I said, okay, that's kid stuff. I'm done with that. 
And then I went to college in the early 70s and I had a friend of mine who was reading comic books. And I said, what? I said, what? And it, it didn't <laughs> compute. And then I would go to the, the local stores. I mean, I'm talking about like the drug stores, like a, like a Colson's kind of store because there was no comic book stores in those days. Not certainly not where I was in New Paltz. And then you had to search around trying to find, you know, the, the latest issue of Howard the Duck or Submariner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there was finally stores like uh, the Crystal Cave in New Paltz, which is the one I used to go to. And then places like Fantico, which started in 78. And that it was the evolution of the direct market helped create a lot of diversity of what, what's available. And they, that wouldn't have sold if it was just for the kids, as, they, as, as, you, as it were. Now, I alluded earlier in the interview that you are one of the fortunate people that have not only been on the show Jeopardy, but you've won on occasion. You've, you've I won on an occasion, yes. <laughs> I mean, when you... You still have probably still have some great memories of flying out to California, going on. Actually, that's not true, because and it's really weird, because when I was on, they decided they wanted to do this weird thing about the thirteen colonies. So when I went to Jeopardy, I went to Boston, and Boston was actually a whole lot easier to get to than Los Angeles. A friend of mine drove up from Corning and drove, picked me up in Albany and we went out to, um, to the Boston and stayed at the hotel. And it was, and that was, in fact, I, this is sort of tied to the blog itself, actually. I, when I started writing the blog back in 2005, many, low those many years ago, May 2nd, 2005, since if you're keeping track. I didn't know what I was going to write about except for two things. And one of them was about Jeopardy. So because by that point, it had been seven years, almost seven years since I had been on the show. And I figured if I don't write it down now, I'm not going to remember this stuff. <laughs> so that was one of the two things that I wrote about it very early in my blog and, to, in, and I wrote it every Saturday for like 11 weeks because I stressed it out. It's like a cereal, like a Western cereal <laughs> and, and, and sort of milked it. Correct. Tune in next week and find out. Yes. Well, yes. Like the first, I think the first episode after I passed the test and they were, I was supposed to go to Boston for the, the, the real test, not, not just the... 10 question test and I couldn't go because I had un, a non-refundable tickets to go someplace else actually to Detroit and Cleveland. And so how what was I gonna do? And in the next episode, I just, I described what I did. Now, see, that's part of the fun thing about blogging is there's so many topics you can pull from your life, you can pull from your interests, you can pull from things that you wanna find out and you can get that rapport with your readers and commenters and and the back and forth. And that's very, very important. It keeps your energies going when you blog. Right. And yeah. I learned a lot from blogging. I mean, I, I say, I'm going to write about X. And then I'll say, oh, and then as I'm doing it, I discover, oh, I forgot about that aspect of this. Oh, I didn't know about that aspect of this topic. And I said, oh. So, so it's a learning curve for me. I mean, I don't, I don't get up in the morning and say, I'm, I'm going to write about this and I know how it's going to begin and I know how it's going to end. I might think I know how it's going to start. Mm -hmm. I, I pretty much know how it's going to start. But once, but after that, I'm writing, writing. That's, that's not, that, that doesn't, con that contradicts what I thought that was going to say. Hmm, what do I think about this? And I'm not, I'm not so rigid that I can't change my mind. Usually, except for daylight saving time, which the back and forth of which I think is stupid. But that's another story. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten rigid because I wrote, but it's only because I wrote about it and realized how bad it is for people's health. 
it's not daylight saving time per se, it's the back and forth, particularly, you know, spring forward, which is not even in, in spring, it's in still in like early March. So that's, that's absurd. Hey, just be thankful you weren't living in Indiana where half the state observes it and the other half doesn't. And you've got this between counties, if you're on fast time or slow time, I think they finally standardized it, but for a while, it was an adventure. You'd be, you'd be leaving your house at two thirty and get to your destination at quarter to two. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. I do that now. I don't... <laughs> now that I'm retired, I, I, I mean, I don't know what time it is at any given point. It's all good. It's all good. Um, a couple of questions regarding what do you do when the blog doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, yes. That's my favorite curse. I say, this thing isn't writing itself. <laughs> this post isn't writing itself. Um, well, there's two things that are true. One is that I write ahead. So if, I, if it's just not happening, I just let it, I'll just set it aside. Maybe I can write about something else. Maybe, you know, I, I don't, that, that helps a lot. And sometimes I just sort of look at it, look at research or look at articles or look at news stories or whatever, and they'll give me a, a clue as to what I could, which way I can go with this. But you're right. Not every blog post, and I have right now, I don't know if I'll ever use them, but right now I have a draft folder of 315 blog posts. Only three. Now, I may never, I may never finish them. <laughs> I may I may look at that some at them sometime and say, hmm, I could I could do that. Oh, now I know. It's sort of like when when you read a book or if you study anything, and suddenly you have a eureka moment, and it might be when you when you're older or you've experienced more things, and suddenly, ah, I see where this goes now. I try very much not to force the issue because I don't want it to become a drudgery. I don't want it to become a job. I don't want, to I don't want it to not be fun at some level. I mean, there's work in writing the blog, but I don't want it to be so onerous that I'd rather not. <laughs> and, the, and another thing I wanted to mention, I know that with a lot of bloggers, there's this tendency to talk about things that are personal. Mm -hmm. you, you've been quite clear about certain things that you've talked about in your life. Also, some things you've talked about, about your niece, about your family and your history of like your genealogy. But there are certain times where I can imagine there are things you won't discuss either out of privacy or just because it's too personal to be sharing on blogs. I, I don't know that there's a whole lot about my own life that that would apply to, except as it applies to someone else in that same situation. Like, I you know, if I'm talking about me, I, I don't care. But if I'm talking about me and somebody else, well, I, I care about their privacy or, or it, or, or, maybe it won't be that big an issue. For instance, I, I know, I think I'm going to do this. I'm not sure. But in 2020, I have a whole bunch of journals that I started writing in 1972. And actually they're more diaries, not really journals. I mean, they're, they're pretty detailed. Like, like what I ate. I mean, literally, I mean, it is exactly what people said about what blogging was like. Well, no one cares what you ate for breakfast, which I almost never write about, by the way. Maybe once or twice, but I don't, it's not one of my go-to topics. But in the in this in this diary, I can tell you what I ate for breakfast on March 6th, 1972, or whatever. It's not that interesting, mind you. But and I probably won't blog about that, but I could blog about the other things that go on. And because 1972 was a very important year in my life. The year. I, I was subject to the draft. It was the year I got married for the first time. It was the year I was in a car accident. It was the year I got married. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so it, it's it's a monumental year. Of so I would probably write about it and be and find out things I didn't remember because it happened a half a century ago. But it also becomes great, great subject matter, and it also can be inspiring for not only that type of blog but other other thoughts. Right. I mean, I'm not going to transcribe it. I'm going to take, take the um, the gist of what it says and think they'll probably be, they'll tell me they'll tell me details though that I would have long forgotten. Uh, wait, wait do you start getting involved where you end up bringing in characters into your blog like a poetry reading bear or uh, or doctors uh, who can speak Novocaine when you're all numbed up? Yeah, I saw the one you did about Novocaine. I mean, very, uh, oh yeah, yeah, your mama. <laughs> Grandmama. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but so today you, you've been operating this blog. You've been doing it for 16 years now. Yes. And how important to you is it to never miss a day? Well, it's there's, a, there's two things. One is that if I stop, I fear that it'll be too easy to not do it the next day. And there's something about the, the, the repetition. And because I don't have to write, literally don't have to write it every day. I mean, I might write two posts in one day. I wrote two posts as the day we, we taped this. But I didn't write anything on the weekend. The weekend is almost impossible. I have all these Zoom meetings with my families, you know, and it's, so it's really hard to do anything on the weekend in terms of writing. But on the other hand, I think there's, there is a certain element of uh, Cal Ripken Jr. here where <laughs> you, might, you might wish you, maybe you should have, you know, take a day off, you know, rest, <laughs> rest your, your, your arm or something. Oh, but yeah. you say, I mean, oh, well, but, you know, and I also inspired by some bloggers I've known. There was a guy named Dustberry. He, used to, he lived in Oklahoma. He died a couple of years ago. And he had he'd been writing since like 1995 until 2018 or 2019. And yeah, September of 2019. Because I know that because I happened to look at my my the backside of my blog and I realized the day I had the most hits on my blog was the day I announced that he had died in my blog because I got 1,700 hits mm. on, in one day. <laughs> And it was because I'd written about him and he was a very well-known blogger in, in, that, in that circle. So, you know, so I, I figure he's, he wrote for 20, almost 25 years. So I'll figure if I, once I get to 25 years, maybe I'll consider it. But it also depends on whether, like, I don't know, J Chuck Miller misses a day, then maybe that will get, take the pressure off me. Yeah, <laughs> that ain't happening, bro. I got 12 years and... Uh... I got a long running start and that goes from that goes back to a blog spot blog for about, I'd say, three weeks, eight and a half years in another place and then three and a half in my own shingle. So, right. So that's what I'm saying. So I, I could ask you the same question. I mean, why, why don't you take a day off? And and you work harder than I do. I will say this because what? I know that you write except for the collar collar world stuff you tend to write extemporaneously you tend to write in in the moment yeah i think with with me it's i've got 12 different subjects i can go to mm -hmm. i can do a k chuck radio where i just talk about different songs together i can do a bachelor cooking um if a telephone scammer calls me i've got the recorder ready to go on him and you know, it's just so much, so much that I can mix back and forth. So I, it, for me, there is a bit of a flexibility. Now, over time, I've developed Saturday as being the blog recap, and now right. Friday nights for the radio show. Right. But I know you've done like an ABC Wednesday on your blog. Yes, that which I did for I did that. Well, it's a, it's a group I was actually in charge of for some time, and that went on for like twelve and. I, it existed for 12 and a half years of which I did it for about 10 and a half. 
and it's it's now defunct. But I it was it, and the great thing about ABC Wednesday was that it gave me structure, and and you got to I think of this as a skeleton, um, a year. So I've been doing because I can because I can something about music every Saturday, because it just seems okay. Something about music will pop up on Saturday. I don't know what it's going to be. I've been doing this this thing once a month of talking about the um, the top the, the number one hits of a given year. And this year, I'm in, in 2021. I'm doing years ending in the one, so like 1901, 1911, 1921, 1931, 1941, mm -hmm. up to 1991. And I'll do that once a month between January and October. And I'll do 20. I'll do 02 in night in next uh, in 20. 22 i have no idea what yours you know it's and it, it, it gives me a framework so i don't have to like what am i going to write about any day i don't have to know what i have to write about is better and i'm going to write about christmas and i'm going to write about easter and i'm going to write about saint patrick's day because i'm a quarter irish that's actually literally true uh, people might think i'm making a joke here you i actually am not <laughs> according to my dna well, you know what? I, I, I would I was tempted to try that DNA thing, but mm -hmm. uh, instead of giving like the usual DNA swab, I ran it under the uh, under the tap water in the faucet and it came back, said that my mother had an affair with the Culligan man. Well, that's probably true. But I, but I, you know, I, I, you've lived through that shame and you've come back at, at the other side much better. Yeah, that's why my last name is not uh, Chuck Rotorooter. Okay. <laughs> I have no retort to that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of a draining thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, Roger, just a couple more questions. Where do you feel the future of blogging is these days? It's, it's every, I've been reading for the last decade how blogging is all but dead. So, I think there's still a place for having a lengthy conversation. I mean, that'd be lengthy. I mean, three, four, 500 words. Because what you can say in a tweet isn't, doesn't give you any context. I find that terribly limiting. And whereas what I do for, um, in a blog, it gives me a chance to think what I'm thinking. To, to come up with, you know, that person's stupid. Okay, that's that's not all that, you know, if I say, no, that person's stupid and this is why I think that person is stupid. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a different thing. You're giving a context, even if it's not, or that person's corrupt or that person is a hero of mine or that person is, you know, if I just say, I like Dr. Seuss, Okay, okay. This is why I like Dr. Seuss, you know, because I and I've written about him many times in my blog. And here's some of the examples I've written about uh, Dr. Seuss. And this is what I think of the controversy that was going on about Dr. Seuss. So if you give a context to this, I think you, you're having a real conversation. And having a, a tweet or microblogging, a term I, I find abhorrent, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, should I be like checking down the barrel of a microscope while I, you know, touch a keyboard or something? Right. I mean, I see value of certain things. I mean, I understand why people do Instagram. I don't do Instagram, but I'm not against Instagram. But it's not. It's just not my. It's not my thing. Mm. But but tweeting just to say a a line doesn't doesn't do anything. I think if you're going to have a conversation. And we talk about this in terms of the country. What's the country going for? What, how would we get to understand what each of us says, what, what each of us thinks? You can't have that in, in a tweet battle. You can't create understanding in a tweet. You just can't. You can express an opinion, but you can't really express a thought. And so I, I, I keep being a fan of this. I do, I do need to say one more thing here because I didn't, I don't work, I didn't work for the Albany Public Library. I, I did volunteer stuff for the public and still do actually. 
I work for the Small Business Development Center, which is a library in downtown, which is a closed thing. But I do, I am very active in the Albany Public Library and will continue to be active in the Albany Public Library, even as it, it starts to open up <laughs> slowly and surely. Mm -hmm. And finally, what are some of the best ways that you have found to help promote your blog to the public? Well, part of it is that, I mean, I, I just I just write so, this thing. What would Chuck Miller like me to write so that he'll put me in his weekly blog role? No, I know I you. That's the entirety of my of my promotion. <laughs> I know you don't do that, man. <laughs> I mean, because if you were going to raise all debt, <laughs> one of these days, if I have to flip by here and I'm seeing, oh, look at this RG radio here, like wait. <laughs> I'm in it here. Oh, I, you know, you haven't. Yeah, I did that. I did that three or four times already. You know, you don't remember it, don't you? Okay, I'm kidding. I don't. I mean, I sometimes I make sure that people when I mention them, I meant I let them know that I've mentioned them, mm -hmm. and that they say, oh, and they and they often repost things in their Facebook and say, oh, what, da, 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 da. you know. But but frankly. You know, I go to people's websites, although I don't do it like I used to because it, it's it's harder. I mean, it, it, in the in the beginning of my blogging, when I was first started blogging, I would go I would go to a bunch of blogs, and I would comment, and people would say, "Who's that? Who's that?" And once they I, and they would say, "Oh, well, he's the guy who's that." rogerogreen.com who's what what's he writing da, 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 da. so part of it is again the relational stuff part of it is 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 the network part of it is the community you know that's and, and frankly some of some of the people i tend to read most are, are on your on your blog role because oh yeah that's right they're they're doing a blog oh, yeah, yeah 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 and it and it helps to understand and you, particularly because you highlight a particular article, I said, oh yeah, that's particularly interesting to me. So I, I let them know that I've written, I've written something that's similar to that or something that's related to that. And, you know, so some of this is plain old commenting. I, I, I do a little, I think my, my blog also goes out on Twitter every day, but that's at auto feed. I mean, I don't even see it. I don't see Oh yeah, I've got, I've got the auto feed going on mine. Yeah, so I I don't I suppose if I really worked at it, I could do all sorts of wonderful things and and enhance my reach in the blog. But you know, I I last year it was really weird. I was writing a lot about race in in twenty twenty. It was a year you could you could write about a lot about race, and I wrote about it more than I had probably before before that in any, I wrote more about race in 2020 than I had in any previous year, possibly you know, all the years combined because it was that kind of year. And people saw my stuff when, from Facebook and said, oh, well, we should talk about this in church. Oh, we should talk about this and this. And so people find it. And I was astonished because I've been, I was just doing the same thing I was doing all along. <laughs> I didn't do it for the purpose of getting attention. Mm -hmm. I was writing what I thought. I was writing what I felt. And maybe it was a little bit more heartfelt because it was the, or maybe it was the time that we were going through, are going through. But I, I just, I don't, I don't spend as much time on that as I suppose I could and should promoting the blog. But I did put a new header on this year which is like the old header I had about four years ago before it crashed my computer. So it, it's, you know, I just try to keep it fresh for me. And if I put out decent content over time, I think it, people will appeal, appeal to that. And I, and I try to do what you do, which is to say, I try to mix it up. For instance, there was a time, I think in January of 2021, when I saw five movies in five days, and I wrote five reviews. I didn't post them one after the other because th that would be boring to me and it might be boring to them. So my, my goal is to write a blog that
that's if you maybe that doesn't interest you today, but maybe tomorrow's post will be more to your liking. I try to keep it varied, exactly. which of course I learned from you. <laughs> you never know. I guess one of these days, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and be like, you know what, we're blogging about that today. Push right. Before I had scheduled for like two weeks from tomorrow, and right. And and I find that wakes up, I wake up all the time, and I'm taking the shower or I'm wake up in after a dream or something, and I say, oh, I should write about that. And and the day before, it hadn't occurred to me to write about that. Definitely, Roger. I want to thank you so much for being part of this. It's been absolutely wonderful. For those of you who do want to follow Roger's blog, you can either go over here to the personal blog role or you can go to rogerogreen.com and he posts new articles and new observations every day. And it's the one with a duck. With a duck. Look for the guy with a duck. <laughs> Buy a duck. <laughs> okay, going Donald Duck and I'm going Chico Marx. So <laughs> buy a duck. <laughs> Roger, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Chuck.